Gaming truly is an art form. All of the components require a lot of attention to detail. In this day and age where games are becoming incredibly polished, I personally love when games have paid attention to the full scheme and let the music assist in getting you sucked in. Being the delicious sprinkles in a digital Sunday, music occasionally is the unsung hero. Today I want to give praise to 10 OSTs in this video game world that I truly love. Now, a few disclaimers before we start. Firstly, this is solely my opinion. I'm not trying to step on anyone's toes and I'm not trying to tell anyone that their musical tastes are bad or wrong. Music is totally opinionated and this is all my opinion. Is there a game that's not on my list that you love the music to? Let me know and I will make sure to check that out. And second, I want to try to not duplicate any composers or dev teams. Some composers are consistent as hell and I don't want to clog up this list talking about the same old people over and over and over again. But with that being said, let's hop into this list. Back in the day, the Xbox Live Arcade was a very great place to get a good selection of games. But man, was Castle Crashers something else. The team over at the Behemoth really brought the noise with this game, and it helped bring me into the indie gaming scene. Packed with very tight controls, a wide array of characters to play as, and an arsenal of weapons to fight off the opposition, Castle Crashers instantly became a cult classic. The music in this game does such a wonderful job conveying the exact atmosphere that the dev teams wanted you to go through. Some tracks are beautifully orchestrated, with lots of strings and bells, while others are synthetic rumps, utilizing bright synths and deep percussion. Some notable tracks for me are Mud Holes, Chaos Japan, The Volleyball Game and The Final Confrontation. The Behemoth did such an amazing job with Castle Crashers, and if you haven't played it, I highly, highly recommend you team up with some friends and play this button mashing adventure. Halo as a franchise to me, it's a bit dead now, which is kind of a shame because I grew up with Halo. Specifically Halo 3. Halo 3 was the real fucking deal. Having probably one of the most amazing ad campaigns to date with the unforgettable Believe ad, I knew in my young adolescent bones that Halo 3 was gonna fuck me up. And it did. Halo 3 is so in tune with every element. The devs at Bungie know exactly what a great action story requires and that's a great soundtrack. They nailed it. Having a kind of Danny Elfman cinematic vibe to each track, Halo 3's beautiful music and precise composition helps getting your blood pumped for taking out the Covenant, while still having moments of serenity so you're not going apeshit going for all those legendary achievements. I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't have an NES growing up. I didn't really get to have that luxury until I was about 15 or 16. Oh, but boy once I got that taste of NES, I was hooked. The first game that I ever conquered on the NES was Castlevania. The gameplay was unforgivably challenging and Castlevania really pushed my skills as a teen. Being on the NES, this game had a very limited instrument palette to play with but the composers were still able to emulate such true feelings of terror and triumph. The soundtrack is so fun! Most songs are constructed with wonderfully poppy beats, but they often have subtle rhythm changes to kind of mix in this old-time feeling of horror. It was so satisfying to have this true vampire horror and vampire feel to this game made in the 8-bit era. A great example of this to me is the song Walking Edge. Castlevania is a vampire slaying journey I am always willing to go on just for the amazing music.
All right, so what do classic rock band The Police and beloved Sony mascot Spyro the Dragon have in common? If you guessed Stuart Copeland, you would be right. The drummer of the influential genre-defining The Police helped compose the music in Spyro, and it really shows. When I first started scripting out this video, I only went with Spyro 3. But why would I not include the other two? Stuart Copeland did an amazing job on all three games, and they were created in such quick succession. Spyro 3 specifically only had a dev period of like 10 and a half months. It really made sense to me to just include all three of the games on my list. For me, I have the most memories with Spyro 3, and the music really helped cement that game into my memories. Every track has this thoughtfulness to it. The instruments are layered so perfectly, and the music does a wonderful job encapsulating the late 90s culture it was born into. With the Reignited trilogy just recently have come out, now is a perfect time to go visit our beloved Purple Dragon. Personally, zombie games just don't have a lot of appeal to me. Not trying to bash anyone's tastes, they're just not really for me. But if you can throw together a lot of randomness, and colorful NPCs with a retro-themed world where you spend a lot of time strategizing? You got me. <music> Death Road to Canada is all that and way more. This precious gem of a game is actually kind of new on my radar. It's so jam-packed with a wide assortment of game modes, including one where you can encounter characters you've created, which is just so awesome. But the music? The music seals the deal. Starting from the main menu all the way through, and I mean all the way through, to the end. The music here is so phenomenal. It's kind of this classic rag meets modern electric, utilizing a lot of synthetic beats with a lot of chipper video game sounds that are met with a beautiful arrangement of guitars and pianos. Not all tracks are lighthearted though, and when things get tense, the music is there to remind you of your potential fate. Personally, I think you should sit down with a friend because you can play this game locally, dim the lights, and create the right atmosphere for a zombie apocalypse, and try to survive together. And from the second you start up, you're going to be boogieing all the way over to Canada. Everybody has their first fighting game, and for me, I didn't see the appeal of it until my dad introduced me to Tekken 3. I first played Tekken 3 on an arcade cabinet, I was like, I don't know, 7 or 8 or something. I was a kid. And I loved it. I loved the world, I loved the music, I loved everything that was going on. But fast forward to me receiving my first physical copy of the game on the PlayStation 1, and I booted up, having all those memories still very fresh in my brain. And things are different. Like, things are a little different, like graphically and stuff, but... What I really noticed was the music. All the music was different. And don't get me wrong, all the arcade songs were featured on the console version of Tekken 3. But I just didn't know a game could be so diverse. That really made Tekken 3 stand out to me, and it still is one of my favorite fighting games. Both versions of the OST have this very powerful music that helped get you into that Tekken zone. Your heart rate speeds up, your palms start to sweat. The high energy in every track is assisted with high energy instruments. Flange guitars, DJ scratches. Tekken 3's music is perfect to put on your Get Pumped playlist because it's gonna get you pumped. Remember how earlier in the list I said I didn't grow up with the NES? I definitely grew up with the SNES. Holy shit, that bad boy brings back the memories. One of those very specific memories for me is Mario. Everyone knows Mario. Whether you love him or you hate him, Mario is a video game staple and he is here to stay. There are so many times where I catch myself humming Mario music and being so delighted that it's just in my brain. Ranging from things like bomb on Battlefield to the original intro in the original games, Mario is full of beautiful compositions. Number 4 on this list is the gaming classic Super Mario World. And can you blame me? 
this game is Mario, but supercharged. And though it might not seem so marvelous now, this was a really big deal at the time. This vibrant world breathes through the cartoony appeal of vivid colors, and akin to its cartoon brethren, the sounds and the soundtrack in this game amplify the level of what's going on here. Super Mario World came out in a time where graphics couldn't do all the talking for your game, and yes, at this time this game was incredibly beautiful. Nintendo had to go above and beyond, and also make sure that the soundtrack was incredibly polished. Koji Kondo is the composer on this game, and for many, many other Mario games. Ranging from the sound to the sound effects, everything lends itself to this game, making it feel incredibly real even though it has this cartoony polish to it. Thank you Nintendo, and thank you Koji Kondo, for really being such massive influences in my childhood. Okay, so for this one, I'm not really even gonna beat around the bush. Pokemon's one of my favorite games. Pokemon's one of my favorite franchises. I collect the cards, I collect the plushies, I have mugs, like, I love Pokemon. Pokemon is my dealio. And I'm glad to consider myself a Pokemon trainer. Pokemon has taught me so much about the values of friendship and hard work. It's always gonna be a part of my heart. Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald are my favorite Pokemon games. The remasters are beautiful, but today I'm going to specifically be talking about the originals. Introducing such lovable characters and having awesome, awesome Pokemon to select from and great newcomers to the team. But the music? Oh, the music is so good! Seriously, there's something about the soundtrack that just brings me in. It's heavy brass meets dainty woodwinds, and it works so beautifully. When I was a kid, I would come home from school, I would turn on my Game Boy Advanced SP and put it on the charger, and I would just listen to the music. I would just let the music on my Game Boy Advanced SP go for hours and hours. Music in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald is so beautiful, and it made me so happy. I wanted to make other people happy too, and I eventually found myself taking up the clarinet. I'm so happy that I was so spoiled as a kid, and was allowed to indulge in video games the way that I did, because it really helped shape me. Now before we move on to number two, I just want to share a quick snippet of my favorite Pokemon track. The Nintendo 64 was a pretty neat device, helping transition a lot of iconic Nintendo characters into 3D and being very infamous for that janky and confusing controller. The Nintendo 64 created its own legacy. Now, I was born in 1995, so I got to really experience a lot of technical advancements all at once. The Nintendo 64 was incredibly primed for my era. And what's cool about that is I got to experience firsthand the Nintendo and Rareware relationship. It was quite the thing. Now, I know Rare is known for their slew of beautiful games, but I have very specific memories for Donkey Kong 64. Call it nostalgia if you will, but this was my very first Rareware game, and it's a doozy. Being known for its massive amount of collectibles, and I mean massive, Donkey Kong 64 is a tropical delight. The compositions in Donkey Kong 64, being composed by Grant Kirkhope, it's very inventive. Rare really wanted the player to understand the worlds that they were being put into. And the best way to do that, when your main pro tags are just a bunch of goofy Kongs, is music. Just about every song in the game features non-musical elements like monkey or bat sounds, or flocks of birds, or the sound of water dripping into puddles. And then that's used to texturize each song. They didn't play it safe here with the soundtrack either featuring your more islandy instruments like marimbas or trumpets, then occasionally layering those with guitars or saxophones. Rare had an incredible vision for Donkey Kong. All the hard work that Rare has put into Donkey Kong over the years really shines, and I don't think he'd be as beloved as he is to this day if it weren't for Rare. As massive as Donkey Kong 64 is, 
And as hard as it is to take on occasionally, the music always brings me back and keeps me here for hours and hours. Putting the faded photo in my pocket, I squinted into the darkness, and I wondered how long I'd be below. Spelunky! This is probably one of my favorite games of all time. I love this game, and I can't wait to tell you about it. I have clocked so many hours into Spelunky. And with Spelunky 2 getting closer and closer, my hype meter is through the roof. This game has a very cute aesthetic vibe, but do not let that trick you. This game is out for blood. You and up to three other friends locally can take on the treacherous task of exploring randomly generated underground caverns in seek of tantalizing treasures. The further you go, the harder the things get, really putting you, your patience, and maybe your friendships to the test. Now, this isn't a full review, and maybe we'll get there one day, so I'll quit my rambling and I'll get to the point. Spelunky's music is fucking hot. Every unique set of worlds you encounter have very specific pacings and instrumentation so that way everything feels very fresh. All the tracks are kept incredibly fresh though by mixing in elements of modern music like record scratches, guitars, fatty synthetic basses, with sometimes more classical elements like saxophones and bells. I've said bells like three times in this video now, can you- I really like bells. Spelunky is a musical masterpiece. I mean, it's just a masterpiece. This game is phenomenal. Like seriously, I cannot do this game justice in the limited amount of time that I have with you in this video today. What I would say is go get yourself Spelunky. It's a marvel to experience and the music itself is probably the best I've ever heard in video games. And those are my 10 favorite soundtracks in video games. If your favorite soundtrack didn't appear on my list, I'm still very interested in knowing what it is. And I'll gladly check it out. I also just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me and making it all this way. Can't wait to share more stuff with you.